What is going on guys? Healy here. Another day, another roster move in the MLB. This offseason has been amazing so far and it seems like every single day there is a move for a big name player in the league. Today, there was a trade between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks have sent Paul Goldschmidt to the St. Louis Cardinals for Luke Weaver, Carson Kelly, and Andrew Yun. The Diamondbacks will also get a competitive balance round B draft pick. So they get three players and a draft pick in 2019. Not bad. Not a bad haul. We'll go over who each side gets. And we're going to start off with Paul Goldschmidt. So the Cardinals get Paul Goldschmidt. He is 31 years of age. And he'll be 31 through the whole, most of the 2019 season. He has one year left on his deal. So that's one thing to note. Uh, he has been in the majors for eight years. He only played 48 games in his uh, first season. So technically seven full years in the bigs. He has a 297 career average with a 398 on base percentage and a 532 slugging. His OPS career-wise is 930. Cardinals, uh, they've kind of had a weakness at first base. Matt Carpenter played first for them last year. But Carp has been a second baseman. He's been a third baseman. I'm expecting Carpenter to probably move back to third base for next year as Colton Wan is their second baseman. But Paul Goldschmidt in 2018 finished sixth in the MVP voting. Uh, his past two years, he's had good seasons. He's won the Silver Slugger the past couple years. Gold Glover in 2017 and also finished third in the MVP voting in 2017. But his 2018 season, he had 690 plate appearances, 593 at-bats, 95 runs. He had 172 hits, 35 doubles, 5 triples, 33 home runs, drove in 83 runs, stole 7 bases. Cool. Uh, he walked 90 times and struck out 173 which is the most he's ever struck out in a season. His average was 290. His on base was 389 and his slugging was 533. So not much of a difference between his previous years with a 922 on base plus slugging. His home runs remained similar. His doubles remained similar. His hits went up. He did have a decent amount of at bats more, but like, I want to get too caught up on the strikeouts. That just means he was striking out more instead of popping up or grounding out instead. So, but yeah, 173 strikeouts. The question for the Cardinals is going to be, are they going to re-sign him? They gave up three players, none too high value, as we'll talk about them, but are they going to get Paul Goldschmidt for one season? Jason Hayward went there for one year and he ended up leaving. But uh, they've also had a lot of success in the past trading for guys and keeping them around like Jim Edmonds and even Scott Rowland. The Cardinals are looking up. They were never really looking down. They haven't really been rebuilding. The past couple of years, though, they haven't been as great as they were in the past. But they have a lot of great young talent coming up. And their team's looking solid for the next few years. Paul Goldschmidt, he seems like the type of guy that would love the St. Louis environment and love their fans, very dedicated fans in St. Louis. So I could expect him to sign a deal uh, that goes until the end of his career. I'm unsure if they're able to sign him to an, an extension right away or they have to wait till the end of the year. Um... We'll have to see on that. But personally, I, th I feel like Paul Goldschmidt will like St. Louis. He'll stay there the rest of his career as he is going to be 32. But who knows? He might try to enter the market next year. The Cardinals would have to make a good deal for Goldschmidt to stay 
isn't just going to stay just because it is St. Louis. There needs to be some money behind it. Moving over to the Arizona Diamondbacks. We'll start off with Carson Kelly. Carson Kelly has been in... He hasn't really played in the bigs. He's played a total of 63 games over the past three seasons. Uh, He's a career 154 hitter in the bigs. I'm not really going to get too much into his MLB stat, but we will go over his minor league stats. So in 2018, he played in 83 games in the AAA level. He batted 269, 378 on base, 395 slugging. He had 79 hits, 119 total bases, 14 doubles, 7 home runs, and 294 at-bats. He struck out 48 times, and he walked 48 times with four intentional walks. So not terrible. You would like a player to have a lot better hitting stats in the minors as their numbers would probably get lower when they get up to the majors. He is a catcher, though, so he will get some slack for being a catcher. Most of the time, it's for defense. Uh, I don't know too much about Carson Kelly, so he might just be a good defensive player. He's 24 years of age, not a bad pickup for the Diamondbacks. And who knows? He's been in the majors up and down the past couple of years. Yachty was with the Cardinals, and the Diamondbacks might use him this year. I think Jeff Mathis was with the, the Diamondbacks, and he's now with the Rangers. So they've been looking to fill that catcher's spot. And it looks like the Diamondbacks are going to be rebuilding or change up the team a little bit. And Carson Kelly might get a lot of playing time this year. Luke Weaver, the second piece in this trade. He has pitched the past three years as well. He pitched nine games in 2016, started eight, 13 in 2017, started 10. And he pitched in 30 in 2018 and started 25 games. So he had his first full season in the bigs in 2018, pretty much starting 25 games. He went 7-11 with a 4.95 ERA. It'll, he pitched in 136 innings. Uh, you'd like that to get higher, but that's fine. He allowed 83 runs, 75 being earned in those 136 innings, and he struck out 121 guys. His his strikeouts per nine was 8.0. His walks per nine was 3.6. That's a lot for walks per nine. We'll have to see if he can get that down. Home runs per nine was 1.3, and his hits per nine was 9.9. So he needs to find a way to bump up his strikeout numbers and decrease the rest. He's 25 years of age, and he's still... A uh, fairly new player in the majors. Uh, We'll have to see how he develops, but he does have some time to turn it around before uh, the teams are going to have to give up on him. And the third and final player that the Cardinals picked up was Andy Young, 24 years of age. Uh, The highest level that he's played in so far was double A. In 2018, he played in advanced day, and he played in double A. Played 84 games in advanced day, 35 in double A. He had a combined total of, I'm going to combine his averages. He hit 289. He had 432 at-bats, 61 runs, 125 hits, 13 doubles, 21 home runs, 58 RBIs, walked 38 times, struck out 85 times. His on-base percentage was 379, and his slugging was 479, with an OPS of a 858. He is a second baseman, so those numbers are actually pretty decent for a second baseman. And like I said before, you'd like to see them hit better in the minors. He had 276 in advanced day, and when he moved up to double A, he actually hit 319, was which was great to see. He's going to be moving up the ranks throughout the next year. I would expect him to start in double A next year, maybe triple A, maybe and uh, play a full season there, and expect him to be 
on a big league roster in 2020. Uh, you could see him as a September call-up for 2019, but I would assume that he will be at the big league level in 2020 if everything keeps going as planned. So my thoughts on this trade, I feel like the Cardinals made a fantastic trade. Carson Kelly wasn't looking too special. Luke Weaver wasn't looking too special. Andy Young, he's still in the minors. It doesn't matter. They are trying to compete, win another World Series. This Cardinals team doesn't like breaking down. They just love competing more. They have a solid team. They almost made the playoffs last year with that team that they had. And the even the, the manager change like halfway through the year. And adding Paul Goldschmidt to that lineup is going to make them deadly. So now they're going to have Paul Goldschmidt, Matt Carpenter, Jed Jerko, M Marcel Ozuna, Yadier Molina. That team is solid. And who knows? It might even splash another free agent this offseason. But with this move, they are showing that they're all in to try to get back to the World Series in 2019. Also, uh, I saw an, an interesting stat. Paul Goldschmidt is a Cubs killer. He, career numbers, destroys the Chicago Cubs. So it's not looking good for the Chicago Cubs. Uh, hopefully this move by the Cardinals will show Theo that he needs to make some big moves this offseason as well so that the Cubs can remain on top as a uh, great ball club. From the Diamondbacks' perspective, they didn't get much for Goldschmidt, but it's kind of understandable. Maybe they could have gotten more for Goldschmidt if they waited, but mm, you got to take what you can get when it's on the table. Goldschmidt was not going to re-sign as a Diamondback. They knew that he wasn't going to re-sign as a Diamondback, so they pretty much got what they thought would be the best value for him, knowing that he only had one year left. So I think the Cardinals easily won this trade. If they could sign him to a long-term deal, even better for the Cardinals. But let me know your thoughts on this deal down below, uh, what you think of it. Uh, if you have not subscribed already, make sure to do so. Leave a like. This is Healy, and I am out. Peace.